Hi, happy Thursday. Uh, Lisa Solomon here for another Power Up conversation. And today I'm excited that I'm going to have my guest, Paul Santello, join us. Um, I'm waiting for him to join. I always like to talk a little bit about what I'm doing and why I'm even doing these conversations. So I started um, uh, Athenium Collective in order to create courses by industry experts um, in the fields of advertising, marketing, and media. And that was really in order to give people information, knowledge, and skills that help them in their career. At Athenium Collective, we believe that knowledge is power. Knowledge shared is power multiplied. So we really want to be able to crowdsource knowledge, provide actionable tips that help you power up today. So I love being able to, you know, talk to people within my network, some of the experts who have taught courses, so that we're able to um, provide real actionable insights and talk about things that are happening today. Um, Paul was actually one of the very first experts that I had um, when I started this company because he has such an interesting insights um, in the world of advertising and marketing. Um, when you work at an advertising agency, there's the relationship between those people who buy the media, the people who um, uh, create the media plans, or maybe they need ad technology solutions. And then there are those people who are the sellers. Um, and there is an entire industry around that. And I see that Paul just joined. So now hopefully he can see how to join me. Ah, we got it. Go live. And he should be joining right now. Hello. I'm so, I'm so sorry I'm late. I was uh, wrapping up another call, but no so worries. You, for, you were very, uh, very able to fill the time. So I did. I gave a whole introduction about you, about your you know, the background and the perspective that you bring to the table, having been somebody who's, you know, been at an advertising agencies for a long time, as well as being somebody who's been on the other side of that table, that relationship, where you've also been the seller, that you're the ones coming into an agency to provide solutions, to provide, you know, different media. And I think it's a really unique perspective. And I was mentioning that that was why when I started this company, I knew I had to have you as one of my experts to teach a course. And Paul teaches a course called Winning, uh, Winning More Business for Media Sellers. Um, why don't you just, why don't we just kind of start with sort of a little background about who you are? Sure. So um, I've been in the ad space uh, for about 30 years. And um, I've really played a lot of different roles in that. I've been at almost every kind of agency. I've served as an account person. I've served as a uh, media executive. I've been at digital agencies. I've been at traditional. I mean, honestly, just name it <laughs> some way, uh -oh. shape, or I've also had uh, a couple of client roles and then a couple of seller roles. So I've really kind of seen the industry from client, from agency, from seller. And I think what that gives me is a unique perspective on really the mindsets of all of those individual people and sort of how to really understand what each of them is thinking when you're trying to, you know, transact business. Which I love that. And that's why I think given where we are today in, let's face it, I mean, very unprecedented times, what are some, you know, I would also mention that you wrote a really great blog for the site, which was about how do you, you know, really sell and create these partnerships and these relationships in a time of crisis. And it's, you had mentioned, it's not business as usual. And I guess my question for you is, you know, what does the business look like? And, you know, what, what would some of the tips that you have for people right now to do the best they can in what is, you know, some very challenging times in most cases? So, I mean, I, I don't need to tell anybody that there's a, there's a great deal of uncertainty right now with respect to, um, you know, what's going on with consumer behavior um, and in, with respect to not only what, what they're buying and how they behave, but sort of how, what their media consumption is like. And so every single marketer is dealing with it. You know, marketers that have long-term commitments are trying to get out of them and do and transact more on a short-term basis because they don't really know what the future holds. 
um, some marketers that maybe, you know, weren't in enough. Like there's some industries that are actually receiving quite a bit more attention than they have pre-COVID. And so some of those folks are looking for ways to kind of get in, you know, like some and of the- that be? So, well, some of the more basic companies, like some of the consumer product companies, you know, Clorox with, you know, their wipes, yeah. products being in demand. You know, there are some companies that are actually seeing quite a, quite a great degree of lift because of COVID. Others are seeing contraction. So, but the thing is, everybody's seeing a change and people are kind of saying, trying to understand what does the future hold and how should I participate in it? And so, you know, what I, what I tell sellers, and you know, sellers still have to have a job to do, right? to sell media. And so what I tell them is Look, when you come in for a meeting, what would be great is if you didn't just bring your standard, you know, marketing created presentation, but you came in and gave us some insight into what is your take as to what's going on in the market? Like are more people using your property because of COVID or fewer? If fewer people are using it, why should I still consider you? Will they come back? You know, or should I use it, your property for a different reason? Like, it's everything sort of needs to be related to kind of what's happening now and in the foreseeable future, because no one really knows, but you can't just come with a big question mark. Like, I don't know, yeah. got to have a point of view. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm a streaming, I'm a streaming property. Streaming kind of came up and it's kind of holding. And we think it's going to hold for a while because we think that's a permanent behavior change. You know, this is just an example. I mean, yeah, like that, totally. that's the kind of things we need to hear from, um, from, uh, from media sellers out there, stuff like that. And in terms of being close to what is happening sort of in this consumption, what are some of the things that you've seen are major changes that have kind of affected how you think about the clients that you're working for? And anything that was surprising? I mean, I know some people know, we think that they know, but it would be interesting to hear from your point of view, what are some of the you know, media consumption habits that have changed that have kind of changed how you guys are thinking about transacting business? Um, yeah, I don't think this will surprise anybody, but guess what? More people are watching TV and more people are learning on digital um, environments. I mean, that's, there's nothing else to do, right? People, <laughs> people are stuck inside. Yeah. I mean, so they're going to watch more TV um, and they're going to be on their digital devices more. I think that um, what, what we have noticed is, is that with regards to the digital space. So, I mean, let's talk about TV before I get to digital. Okay. There's no sports. So um, people are watching more news as a substitute for sports. Um, and more local news, I saw. One of the things I saw is a big up uh, in terms of people going in to local news and what I thought was really interesting because I saw this is that they're also watching more news during the day. Yeah. Because working but, from home. I, so for me, for instance, you know, I'm working from home. I have a TV set in my office and it's kind of always on. Like I'm not sitting here glued to it because I have too much work to do, but but I occasionally glance over and look, <laughs> look, look at the, you know, look at the headline on the news. And if it's a story that I'm really interested in, I might put myself on mute and kind of go pay attention to it. <laughs> and hopefully I'll call my name. Um, but a lot, I'm not the only one doing that. A lot of people are doing that, you know? I do think, you know, personally, this is, this is N equals one point of view. This is not anything I've seen. Ever. I don't know that that, I think people are fatiguing on the news. I think the news every day is like, all right, there's another protest and let's come on the news with today's death count and new case count on COVID. I think people are getting tired of that. I think I think the one thing that people may be uh, watching the news more for right now is some of the more human interest stories that actually make them feel good, um, as opposed to the you know the you know the negatively positioned news stories. So there's definitely more news consumption, uh, more because again, all that consumption of sports is going to go somewhere else. People are you know needing something else to watch. Within digital. Um, People are very, much more comfortable with transacting digitally, not just not just on social media or not just looking at at, um, at uh, digital uh, websites or feeds, but actually doing business um, with digital. That that goes from you know ordering ordering delivery for restaurants, mm -hmm. ordering stuff on Amazon. I mean, which was always pretty high, but more and more people are doing more of that because they're afraid to go to the grocery store. Um, you know, and even even what we're doing right now. You know, yeah. uh, you know, Instagram Live or Zooms. I mean, people have just 
gotten uh, much more experience and a greater comfort level with living in the digital ecosystem. And that I believe stick. I don't believe that's gonna go away. And so that has huge implications for marketers and media people um, with respect to how are they then going to make sure that their messages are being consumed when more and more people are living life in the digital ecosystem. Yeah, I actually agree with that. I think it's really interesting to see. It's also interesting to see what people are buying right now. I was looking at this report and it's really not surprising, but like, I think bread makers, you know, those automatic bread makers are up like 650%. <laughs> those remember. people who don't make it from scratch. I don't know about <laughs> listening, but I was, remember in the nineties when the bread, bread makers came out? Oh yeah, then, I have one. Yeah, yeah. And stores would pop up you know, on the street, like it, the whole store was just bread makers in the store. And I'm like, okay, do we only need a store for bread makers? And people were buying them. And six months later, all the bread maker stores closed down because, you know, people kind of jumped in thinking everybody needed a bread maker. Uh, you know, and then right after that, carbs became the enemy and no one was eating bread anyway. And, and now all of a sudden, boom, 20 years later, bread makers are back again because bread making is a fun thing to do when you're stuck in your house. Yeah, exactly. And for those of us who don't do it from scratch, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's I actually think it's interesting to see how much behaviors change in some ways it kind of goes the way it used to be like I um I spend a lot of time doing puzzles which I love and I do a lot of you know in home workouts uh -huh. um, you know like YouTube is my new friend um but it's it's interesting to see how we can adapt like I was somebody who loved to leave my house like the thought of staying home all day, oh my God, I would not do it. But now I'm like, there are days that I do not leave except to walk my dog. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm in this place. What are some of the things you've done to kind of manage working from home? Like, what are some of the things that kind of keep you sane? I, I also do the um, at-home workouts. So, I, you know, I belong to a gym, which is streaming workouts. And they still have like the before work and after work uh, workouts, which I do I do generally do before work. Um, so that really hasn't changed because that's not a work from home phenomenon, but they do have one class in the middle of the day, which is kind of like a stretching. Um, it's not really yoga. It's more like a, a stretch. Um, and I, when I can, I actually block out that time in the middle of the day. And I literally walk two steps away from my desk and I can do it right on the floor. Like, so I, you know, so that's something I can never do at work. Right. And it's sort of midday break. Um, so that's kind of one thing. The other thing, one thing I've also taken up is, um, adult coloring. <laughs> I love coloring. It's so I have, therapeutic. Uh, I, I, I literally have a, um, a few things and some pencils and a little sharpener, um, you know, close to where I'm working. And if I'm on a conference call, which and I have to be on a lot of conference calls and the vast majority of them, I'm, I'm either presenting or saying something, but some of them I'm not, some of them I have to listen and I'm just, I start to drift. So I'll pick up a pencil and just start coloring just because I haven't finished one piece of artwork yet, but I'm pretty close on something. Oh, that's exciting. What are you going to uh, do with it? I'm going to frame it and put it in my office at work. <laughs> <laughs> Your COVID-19 okay. drawings. I love it. It's, it's not worthy of being hung in the home. And, it, and I've, you know, my, my husband's already said, you're not hanging that in our house. So <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's great art for the office. When do you think you'll go back to the office? What's the plans for that? And how does that look for? Uh, probably, probably 2021. You're not going to go back in the office till 2021? Not required. Uh, wow. I mean, I've personally been going into the office one day a week. We are allowed to just to, for a change. I've been going every, every Wednesday to kind of break up the week. Um, but, you know, they have, let's put it this way. They haven't advertised to people that you can do that. But for people like me who asked, they've said, yes, you can do that. Just, you know, make sure your workspace is clean, make sure you wear a mask, follow the building protocols. The building's already uh, been tricked out with social distancing marks and, you know, messages about mask wearing and sanitizing and stuff like that. So our building complex is prepared for workers. Okay. Uh, so I, I've personally been going in just because for me, it's a, a break in the middle of the week on Wednesday. Uh, but I haven't seen anyone else yet for my company. And I think the company right now is leading towards us not coming back until uh, 2021. 
So if I'm a seller, that means I am not going to be able to see the people that I present to for another six months. Like, how do you, what's some recommendations? Because like right now, most people are having to do, I would assume some type of virtual, whether it's Zoom or WebEx or whatever people are using as a way to present. Any tips on sure do that so, and do that better? All of the, um, all of the meetings are virtual, of course. Um, and you know, earlier I talked about kind of content for what I would expect from a seller. You know, a, a, a good sale, you know, COVID or no COVID, quarantine or no, or no quarantine is really based upon two things. It's based upon, do you have relevant content and do you have a relationship or a connection with the person that they'll want to do business with you, right? So I spoke to content earlier. I think the connection part, the relationship part is definitely a challenge for sellers in today's environment. Um, you know, there, for, there are little things you can do and there are big things you can do. Um, I will tell you that a lot of the presentations I see, the sellers don't even put themselves on camera, you know, uh, because they're, well, they're, 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 they're sharing a screen, but even, even their, their, you know, thumbnail is just a, a stock, you know, it's, just, it's a photo that's loaded into their um, email server. Um, and I'm like, I don't want to say anything, but I'm like, you know, you should put your camera on. Like, it's a chance to, you know, and again, I'm never, I'm never, I mean, I put this shirt on five minutes before this interview. I'm dressed in gym clothes all day. <laughs> but it's you know, Yeah, put yeah. A, put, a, put a top on, brush your hair, you know, and, and show up, you know, and just try to be, pre so that's one thing I'd say is just like, you know, one way to create that human connection is put yourself on the video. That's easy. I think, you know, something even more so, and some, some may be doing this is like, we can, we can go out of our house right now. You know, I mean, we're not under strict quarantine. It's just like, go out and be safe. So, you know, if you're a seller and you want to connect with somebody, invite them out to a socially distanced coffee, you know, um, you know, and instead of share, instead of presenting off your screen, you know, ask them to bring their laptop and, you know, um, you can, you can even do a zoom, but six feet apart from each other. So you can at least, you know, look at each other, see the content without actually having to get so close to a person to look on their computer. There are creative ways to actually, you know, I would say to a seller, if you have someone you really want to build a relationship with, invite them, invite them out of the house for a presentation. There are ways to do that where you can respect social distance, uh, and, you know, mask wearing, um, protocols. I mean, I, sellers online, invite me. <laughs> All's ready to go out. Come, I'm looking to get out of the house. Invite me to a meeting outside of my house. Thank you very much. I think that people are going to be so thrilled to hear that because I was, uh, I saw actually on seller crowd. So for those people who don't know, there is a, uh, an entire website basically for people who sell in media and advertising to have conversations. And we were, one of the conversations they were having, number one was around Zoom and all of these, uh, you know, virtual ways to communicate. And that, I think it's strange. Like if I'm on a Zoom call, I'm on Zoom because I want to personally see you. I want the video on. Like I've never done a Zoom where I do not have my camera on because the whole point is to be able to see people. And I feel like the conversation is better when I can see your face and I see what you're thinking. And I know when you've paused, so I know when to say something. Well, that's because I think that's because you approach Zoom as a relationship builder. Um, I think, you know, there are other, other things that Zoom accomplishes. One is it allows a screen share, right? So yeah. if, your pri if your priority either as the viewer or the presenter is to share information, you don't make necessarily place priority on the, personal appearance. And then let's, let's like not, let's, let's not ignore the obvious. There are some people who haven't bothered to <laughs> bother to pull themselves together. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm that person on, on many days, you know, I'm like, I'm not putting the camera on because I'm not, not letting you see what I look like right now. Um, but for, you know, for real important meetings, I do, you know, I do, I do pull myself together. Um, and then there are people who are multitasking, you know, some people have kids. Yeah. Uh, that's um, sometimes you got to take the load of laundry out in the middle of that 
conference call. So I do think, you know, I do think we just have to be aware that just because somebody's not on the camera doesn't mean it isn't necessarily a, you know, shouldn't be perceived as a negative thing because people do in this work from home environment, people are challenged with having to multitask and necessarily don't want people to see what they're doing. But it, but it's a missed opportunity if you were looking to build a connection and sell something to somebody. It's a missed opportunity. So I would say if you're a if you're a seller trying to sell something, get all your other stuff out of the way and be present. Yeah, and be, yeah I agree. Be present for that phone call and you know, go on camera, look like you look like you would if you were go, going to visit that person at their agency. And then, you know, and again, if you really have the means uh, and you have the receptible, you know, client, go ahead and invite them out. People are go people are leaving their homes and people want to leave. Yeah. Their homes. Yeah. And I think there's absolutely a way to have a coffee or something socially distanced. Think about a way to respect people's space and their, you know, their and, and their interest in public health and their own health and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think it's also an opportunity to if you can't see somebody, I mean that you still have to create relationships. So I also think you have to, like you were saying, it's not business as usual. I know in your course, we talked a little bit about ways to be creative, but really if you can't physically be with somebody and you're gonna rely on this virtual technology, it feels like you have to get a little more creative in how you engage with people versus just the usual PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. I mean, you know, Again, I'm not necessarily recommending the things I'm about to say for a salesperson in general, but there are things I see people do on Zoom that are very engaging. They create a moment of laughter. They create conversation. You know, people will show up in just a random hat, you know, yeah. pull a hat out of a closet and be like, you know, I saw this hat in my closet. I thought I'd wear it for a while. People chuckle. Where'd you get the hat from? What's the story behind the hat? People, you know, there's all these sorts of backgrounds you can choose now. Um, you know, I think we're tired of looking at, you know, people's bedroom doors and people's beds or the <laughs> exactly or art on their wall behind their office. Like, you know, choose an interesting background and it'll probably make someone laugh or ask you a question. I mean, I think um, these are all ways to engage people and, you know, create a conversation other than, you know, jumping right into a sale. Um, there's just a bunch of small things. Um, you know, I try these all out on occasion. Um, I'll select a background here and there. I haven't really done the hat thing. I mean, there were a few meetings where that I've done where someone said, okay, wear an interesting hat. It was kind of part of the part of what we're supposed to do, but just to kind of show up randomly in a hat, I'm, I'm, I haven't done that, but I've had some people do that. You know, so just, I think you just really have to be, sit down and think about, in this limited environment, if I am not going to be able to see this person, but I have them on camera. Right. And I do to create engagement beyond what is in my presentation. Because as I said earlier, good, as you know, good selling is not only about what you have, but it's like, do I want to work with this? Do I like this person? Do I want to work with them? Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of the partners in the com in competing space, depending on what they're selling, the the differences in terms of what they're offering is you know not a, not always meaningful enough to make one choice over the other. A lot of times you go with, hey, all three of these solutions could work. I'm going to go with the person that that I like the best. Yeah, that's a reality. Yeah, that's, it is absolutely the reality, which is why as a seller you have to any, do a good job. That's in any industry where you're choosing between a number of different you know partners you're going to work with. That's any industry. So be create be creative to try and be the person that gets liked the most. <laughs> yeah, and I think that means sometimes people interpret that as I need to buy you things or sell you, you know, like do something like that. But I think there's so many ways to be creative and to be a genuine partner to somebody. And that's the thing is, is that you, they know that they can count on you. They know they can trust you, that you're authentic um, and that you, you know, you're going to deliver on what you say you're going to deliver yeah. on. And that I'm, matters. I mean, I'm buying things. I mean, you know, sales reps have been buying their agency counterparts things ever since day one, you know? Mm -hmm. that's, that's an established practice. You know, and again, for some people it works, you know? Um, 
but this is a chance to try and recreate something different, right? Like, you know, if every person, if every person who brought me came to my office at any agency I've ever worked at, that either brought me cupcakes or a bottle of something that I like to drink or a juice, you know, all those things. First of all, that happens all the time. Um, but if, they, if that same person tried to send that same thing to my house, it wouldn't quite have the same effect, you know? Yeah. Um, but you you now have a, this whole space of, of Zoom or, or Teams or Skype or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, this is an opportunity to, re, like, redefine how you're going to build a relationship with somebody, you know, and, and do something new and interesting. I think it's an opportunity. You know, I think I think, you know, defaulting to, well, I can't bring them the bottle of bourbon, so I'll just send it to him, is just honestly not something I would do if I were in a similar position. And not only that is I do think you're right. It's a time to redefine because there's so much animosity for the buyers, for the sellers who have to think they have to, you know, always create, you know, whether it's the Botox parties and the used to be the jeans parties, like they feel like they have to do those things in order to create those relationships, yet they they don't enjoy it. So it's like, how do we use this as an opportunity to, yeah, to like rewrite the rules? It doesn't always have to be the same way. And a lot, as you know, a lot of agencies crack down on that kind of stuff. Like if the value of something like that is over a certain amount of money, you know, you're just, and you're not doing business with those people, you're discouraged from doing it, you know, because you're basically accepting a gift. Yeah, exactly. Over the value of what your company's you know, gift policies are. So things like that, like expensive gifts are kind of becoming, you know, a, they're becoming history because companies are, are clamping down on, on employees receiving those kind of things anyway. So. I think that's good. I think that, you know, it's a good opportunity for salespeople to, you know, kind of rethink how do you create those relationships in a more meaningful way. Um, and that does require work, though. It's not going to be easy. But I think being creative and genuine and having a really good team of marketing to help you, you know, it's not just that they have to have a, a support system within the companies they work for to help them. Yeah, I think, you know, as the as the as companies open up, I'm sorry, as the world opens up, I think companies are going to be much slower to open up because, you know, a lot of companies really workspaces weren't built around the cleanliness standards and the social distancing standards. Yeah. And companies want to be in a position where they're liable, people coming back to work and, you know, and catching the virus and then holding the company accountable for that. Um, and, and quite frankly, in the, you know, in the case of, you know, my company, I mean, who keeps checking in with all of us, I mean, people are feeling like they're able to get the work done. Like clients aren't complaining about us not being able to get the work done. People are com not complaining about working from home. You know, yeah. company's not really right now optimally laid out, you know, with the with social distance and the cleanliness standards in mind. So why rush back? So, you know, I think, I think salespeople will be calling on agency folks or brand marketers through um, this, these types of platforms for a while to come yet. I don't think it's over anytime soon. So I do think people need to start thinking about this as, I hate to, this phrase because it bugs the crap out of me, new normal. But I think that's is how people have to start thinking about this, at least for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I like to call it the new better. Yep. Like, why does it have to be the same? Like, why? How, how can we take it as an opportunity to make it better? Wish we could rewind this and I could do another, another take. I would say the new <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no editing. I know we're fine. <laughs> um, so, you know, we actually have a few minutes left. I want to be very respectful of your time. I always like to see if anyone has any questions. And I can do the quick questions. Um, and if they do, they would show up here. It always takes a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, while we wait for any questions, I'm curious, Paul, you know, since I have a, you know, online education platform, have you learned anything interesting in the last, you know, few months while you've been quarantined? Have you taught yourself anything interesting? Oh, you know, I've actually, um, I've taken uh, two, uh, well, I finished one online course. Oh, what was it? Uh, it's called the Science of Wellbeing. Um, 
It's a, you've probably heard of it, yeah. I have, yeah, Lisa Tanner took it. It's a free, it's a free course given by a uh, professor at Yale University. Um, so I've completed that course. I'm halfway through a course also uh, from Yale, uh, also free, on um, financial markets. And I just downloaded a course um, on um, African American history, also from Yale, which I haven't nice. I haven't dug into yet. So um, you know, I'm using um, I a couple things is I, I'm I'm trying to use some of the time indoors to actually learn. Um, but I'm also on this program right now, which involves uh, diet, exercise, and self improvement. And the self-improvement part comes with a daily requirement of, uh, they call it 10 page, read 10 pages. Um, uh, you know, I, I basically equate that to a half hour, even though it would take me less than a half hour to read 10 pages of anything. But so I, so I, I take a half hour out of every day to do something in online learning um, as, as part of this sort of course fulfillment. Um, and so that's how I've that's how I've been clipping through these courses. Um, so I think you know there's there's a lot of there's you know, online learning. there's a lot of great online learning out there, and there's a lot of it that's free. I mean, free stuff taught by professors at Yale. I mean, when is that ever going to happen again? Right? Unless, yeah, totally. I love that. Take advantage of this stuff, and that's one of the other things where I was talking earlier about people are becoming much more comfortable with sort of transacting in the digital space. I think, I think, you know, you probably know this better. Online learning, I'm sure, is hugely spiking because people are just, people have time and want to use the time in a way to, to better themselves or educate themselves, so. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a question. Is there a reason why you've changed roles within your career from media to sales to agency? It was all opportunistic, honestly. Um, none of them were planned. It was just like I was working I was working in a certain position and I, then the phone rang and someone said, Hey, have you ever considered doing this? And I was like, well, not really, but tell me more. And once they told me more, it was interesting to me. And so I had hopped. So, but I never said, Hey, I've been an agency guy too long. It's time for me to get some client experience. It was not that it was not that strategic. It was more, I jumped at opportunities as they presented themselves to me. That's awesome. And it's great when new opportunities come. So yeah. Wonderful. Well, um, it's 102, and I know you have other meetings. I just want to thank you so much, as always. This was, was a great conversation. Well, thank you. Um, and I'm looking forward to your next course, which I think will be on data analytics, right? I, oh, yeah, yeah. As soon as we as soon, well, they, they're going to start filming. They're going to allow filming um, this week, right? So maybe we can kind of get back. Yeah, well, I'm finding some ways to do that. I'm starting my media math course with Anna Locke and Linda Fernandez. Uh, next week, we're going to start filming that. Awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to do the data and analytics course. Um, Yay! And, you know, when the time is right, but it looks like, you know, as as production is, starts getting allowed in uh, L.A. County, we could probably, you know, think about putting it on the calendar at some point soon. I love it. Let's do it. Awesome. All, All right. right. Well, thank, thank you. Happy Thursday. You. You're the best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.